Hello everyone and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I'm your host Stan Rattan and this is the Blue Collar Wine Program where I try to help you spend your wine dollars wisely. What has happened recently is a friend of mine that uh, has a, it works for a really generous wine drinker came by with a DRC, Domaine Romney Conti Latosh, 96 and poured me a big glass of it. <laughs> Scratched that one off from my bucket list. I was jacked about that. You know, I'd never spend the kind of money that that wine, <clears throat> they're asking for that wine. I looked it up online, it was like 2,800 bucks. The reason I wanted to try it is not because it's expensive. I wanted to try it because I've heard so much about this wine. They're iconic uh, Burgundy producers in Nuit St. George. They I mean, Latosh is owned entirely by Domaine Romani Conti, and um, it's an AOP. It's an Appalachian Origin Protégé, all on its own. So pretty incredible. I uh, got a chance to try it. I was very impressed, and at 18 years old, it is still a baby. The nose was incredible. I mean, I was just blown away by the aromatics on this wine. I sort of understand the how people get so consumed by this wine, but let me tell you, uh, I'm just glad that uh, Dionysus, who I refer to this guy as, I'm glad he's generous. I would never, ever have had a chance to try it. I understand why people want it, but I don't understand why they pay that much for it. I'm just saying, it's a lot of money. Today we're going to do some French wines. It's a, a couple of importers that I've never really dealt with. I'm very curious about them. The distributor dropped these samples off to me, uh, and they're, they're very excited about them. So I, I thought I'd give them a try on the YouTube. Why not? And um, we're going to start off right away with uh, this. And this the importer for this one. I don't want to get... For some reason, I'm not flowing here. Probably because I'm going to go to Portugal on Tuesday, just a few days away. I'm excited about that trip. So my mind's kind of drifting. Stick with me. This is a imported by Jacob James. I've never had any wines imported by Jacob James, so I guess they're a small importer. Very curious about this wine. This is a, uh, excuse me on my French here. It's, these are some tough names. I have a hard time sometimes with French labels. They can be very difficult. Domaine Ferrer Ribera Cotes de Roussillon, Cuvée Tradition 2010, and this is a blend of Syrah, Grenache, and Carignan, which is very pot, one of the most widely planted, planted grapes in the Roussillon and Languedoc region of France. And we're going to see what we get on this one. It's $18, so I wouldn't call it what you call a super, I mean it's inexpensive, but not a super duper value. Of course, we're going to find out. Could be wrong. I mean, a lot of my customers are always looking for under $12 wines, which I understand, you know, that when you're drinking table wines, I would assume this is more than a table wine. Pretty cool label on this one. $18. Let's see what we get on the nose. It smells slightly corked, but it's so hard to tell with French wines sometimes. They do get that funkiness on the nose. So this has a lot of earth notes. I get some cherries and, and currants. I'm still thinking. I'm still thinking slightly corked. I'm looking at the. I'm just looking at the cork. Uh, that's not it. Might be this one. Yeah. I don't know. Smelling the cork doesn't do a whole lot. That does smell like cork. I get a tiny hint of a wet cardboard, but I'm, again, I'm not sure. I'll be able to tell more on the palate. It's got some uh, interesting earthy rose petal violets on it. That's super aromatic, but there's some elements there that are coming through. Let's see what we get on the palate.
There's a nice brightness. I don't think it's cork. It is sometimes that those French wines will come across a little bit on the funky side. I'm pretty sensitive to cork, so I believe it's not. By the way, I do these at lunch, so that's why you're always seeing me in these green shirts. Not the shirt that I wear outside of work. But these are work shirts. They're not exciting. They're green. That's why I wear them most of the time. You see them on these videos. I don't have time to change my shirt to do the video, and I don't think you guys really care. You just hear about the wine anyway, right? Very old world on the palate. I get some crushed rock, wet stone. There's definitely some cherry and blackberry notes coming through. A little bit of an underripe blackberry. I get a little bit of like a rust, like a rustiness coming through. A lot of violets, which is interesting, like fresh violet petals. I'm having a hard time with this because it, I think it is slightly corked. Just on the mid palette, I get a little bit of that wet cardboard. This is a tough one. A lot of you would drink this wine and not notice that. I'm, I'm very, like I said, I'm sensitive to it. I think it's slightly corked. But that being said, there's some spiciness to it. There's enough action going on that it really is kind of over, can, overtaking that slightly corkiness that I'm getting. Yeah, I'm calling it corked. I'm pretty sure it's corked. I'm not going to grade a wine that's corked. I think it's a very well-built wine. I think it's got good structure. It has good fruit. It has that nice old world, a little bit of leather, a little bit of earth action going on. I'm going to guess that for 18 bucks, it's a pretty good value. And a lot of you wouldn't notice that it's corked. I mean, I'm just saying, a lot of you wouldn't. Um, and the spices on the back end, the corkiness only comes through on the mid palate. It's just very slightly tainted. Uh, I am going to grade it because I think this is a very good wine. I think it's a BB plus wine at $18. It's got good freshness. I Yeah. You know, I think it's a good wine. Syrah, Grenache, Carignan. Now we're going to move on to G. Molinier Les Segeliers. Saint Chenin the AOC, so this is the Appalachian, is Saint Chenin and it runs in at $19. This is a Syrah Grenache blend. You know, I'm, excuse me for my French, my friend Alan will no doubt help me with that. I do struggle with French labels, and you know I'm, I'll I'll be the first one to admit it. Um, I have a hard time sometimes. I do know some of the rules, so I try to stick to them. But you know I'm not as concerned about how people say the wine. I'm more concerned about how the wine is, whether it's worth it or what you get. And of course, I'm very interested in being able to say some of this stuff. Some are tougher than others. So this is a Syrah Grenache blend, and let's see what we get on the nose. For $19, so we're a dollar more than the last one. Let's see. You can tell this one has Syrah immediately has this smoky, meaty, like roasted meat uh, aromas on it. Get a little bit of bacon fat. There's some boysenberries coming through. Kind of perfume, like I, I, there's some like red flowers coming through it. I get a little alcohol burn on this. I'm very curious about that. The alcohol le level. Excuse me, just one min minute. <sighs> just shed a little bit more light on the subject. Um, anyway, I'm not going to sit there and try and find the alcohol, but I just get a little touch of alcohol burn on the nose. There's an underlying like tarry element to this wine, which is interesting. Very interesting aromatics on this wine. I really like it. 
as you know, and I haven't said this in a long time, so I figure it's fair to say it, I really am into smelling wine. It really enhances the experience. It, 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 it makes the wine, it makes it way more pleasurable in the wine drinking category because you're preparing your palate for some of those flavors that should come through on it. Almost a blueberry element coming through, which is interesting. Let's see what we get on the palate. That's some pretty serious, freaking serious juice for $19. It has nice core backbone and structure. Um, the bacon fat notes come through on the finish right up front. I get a nice plushness, but there's, it's driven under by under belly of minerals that come through and a lot of red flowers. There's a nice bright core. I mean, it just kind of has this clearness, this freshness that is from front to back with that minerality, with those red flowers, with that boysenberry kind of uh, blueberry sort of thing going on. I mean, that, that is a, a definitely a seriously grilled meat sort of red, but I think it has enough, um, it's just, the, the flavors are lingering for some time. I'm really excited about this one. I think it's very good for for nineteen dollars. There's a nice smoky edge. This is one of those nice transition wines. I talked about this in past episodes, where people that are just breaking into old world wines, and I mean, you know, that where you get that leather and minerality, crushed rock sort of thing, a forest floor, this has a little bit of all of that, but it has enough fruit that those who are kind of got cut their teeth on fruit bombs but are wanting to look for something else, this has it, it has a little bit of tobacco notes coming through on the backside. I'm telling you right now, the flavors are just lingering. This is a killer bottle of wine for $19. I'm going to go AA- minus on that one. I'm going to go A-. minus. Not feeling generous, I'm just saying. That's what it is. For $19, that is a great bottle of wine. Let's move on. Now we're going to the Loire Valley, France. Known for Cab Franc. That's their famous red. They do some Pinot Noir. I have a text sheet on this. It is Cab Franc, Gamay, and Cot, which is what they call Malbec in France. Cot, C-O-T. Interesting thing is Gamay. Now, Gamay is, as you know, from southern Burgundy is where they grow Gamay the most. They do some obvious to Gamay in the Loire Valley. Probably should look at the label. Domaine de la <laughs> Renati from Touraine in the Loire Valley. Tradition, 2011, $16. And you might wonder why I put this one at the back of the tasting order. Because of the cot. Malbec from Loire, Cab Franc from the Loire tends to be a little drier, a little sturdier. Let's see if I am right on this one. 16 bucks. Let's see what we get on the nose. Ah, yes, get a lot of that kind of toss salad, uh, green bell pepper, vegetal thing coming through on the nose. A little bit of black licorice, very typical of Cabernet Franc. And, you know, some people like it, some people don't. I mean, there's a very particular palate profile that likes these wines. I'm getting a little currants and blackberries on the back end. Definitely some red flowers and tobacco. Let's see what we get on the palate. Totally not what I was expecting. A little bit plush up front. Just a hint of that, you know, lettuce and um, green bell pepper coming through. 
but a lot of like real fruity up on the front, no doubt from the gamay coming through. A little bit of um, almost like a, a cherry, blackberry, uh, raspberry melange. This is mouth watering. Very solid, acidic backbone on this one. It finishes with like this tobacco and red flower elements with a, a definitely some uh, crushed rock coming through on the finish. <clears throat> a little thinner on the mid palate and finish. It thins out quite a bit. It's not a full bodied wine. Not meant to be a full bodied wine. For sure you can tell. Very mouth watering. I mean you're like oh, it needs a piece of pepperoni or some really greasy meat or some ribs, barbecued ribs would be perfect. This would go actually go well with roasted chicken, barbecued chicken. This would be really good with those types of food, but definitely a food wine. Unless you just want an acid trip, you just want some fresh wine, this would hit the mark. I'm going to go B on this one, B+, plus, just because of the thinness, um, the acidity, it's in balance, it's in check, it's a good wine, it's a way above average. I'm going to go B, B plus on this wine. Yeah, B, B plus. For sure. 16 bucks, come on. If you're into that style of wine, if that's what you're looking for, if you're looking for some, if you're doing some barbecue chicken or just roasted chicken, this would be perfect. And, and for you in the Pacific Northwest, it would go excellent, excellent with salmon. Forgot to leave some wine in my glass. I'm going to try and do a couple episodes before I go to Portugal and Spain. And of course, I'm going to try and do some episodes there. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. If you're not subscribed, wherever you do it, I'm not sure where it is on the video, but subscribe to this channel so you know when I do the next video. Cheers, and here's to keeping the snob out of wine.